Hey guys, so now we know that two of Lee Sun Yoon's blackmailers are in custody being questioned by police. The first one was the Madame, and who looked like the prime suspect. She's been in there since October 19th. And then late last month, the second blackmailer went in for questioning, and it looks like she is the mastermind, but is this a case where both of them really did act separately? Did they start together, then have a fight, and then work separately? Or did they really work separately until the end, until the final end when they decided not to split the money and then turned on each other? We're gonna go over the first audio recording that we have in the timeline between Lee Sun Yoon and his madam coming up. So remember, September 12th is when the madam, Kim Nam Hee, started to get word that she was on a list for investigation. Already there's been rumblings that there's an investigation of the, all of the uh, hostess bars, especially if they are involved in dealing substances to their clientele. So on September 17th, a Sunday, Kim Nam Hee decides to call Lee Sun Yoon. And... Oh. Up until now, oh. it looked like oh, that she oh, was in on Thank this, you. and she was oh. lying to Lee Sun Yoon about a hacker. Now, it's becoming less clear because of this new girl, the upstairs neighbor, who entered into the picture. But even listening to this recording... It does sound like at least she was lying a lot. Now, she calls him and he picks up. You can hear like screen golf or he's at the golf course or he's at the driving range or he's at a screen golf place. So he's able to talk. And if you're also wondering, you know, like, you know, when people say like Korean is a hard language, well, that's because sometimes, you know, people mumble on purpose when they're lying. People use long and windy sentences on purpose when they're lying. So even Lee Sun Yoon, it was kind of comical sometimes. <laughs> he was like, admit, like not understanding what she was saying because she was kind of like mumbling like this. But we were able to get a real clear picture of how this conversation went yeah. down. Oh. She claims that she was pestered, harassed, she couldn't sleep, and she said that it was from the hackers. So remember, this whole thing hinges upon hackers, hackers, hackers. Now, the question is whether the madam, Kim nam really believed that there were hackers out there, or whether she knew that the hackers were fake and not only that we're now we're getting the sense that the hacker was actually the girl upstairs whether she knew that it was the girl upstairs who was the hacker so in this case it sounded like she knew that the hacker was fake but maybe she didn't know the hacker was actually her neighbor now, she said that, oh, these people know exactly what we talked about and did. So the hacker would drop hints about like, hey, I know that Lee Sun Yoon came in and out of your house on such and such date. And then, you know, if it really was like some kind of a hacker, she did get a message. And she's like, oh, that's kind of crazy. That's kind of scary. Oh, it sounds like they know this detail. Oh, they know this detail. I don't know exactly how much they know. That's what she was telling Lee Sun Yoon. But it seems like they know a lot. That's what really kind of pissed me off about this, where it looked like she was lying because she was not very specific. She just kept saying that it looks like they know a lot. They know a lot. So then he asked, well, what? do they want and then she says these people want 300 million won or three 
about three mm, two hundred something thousand dollars, but we just kind of just say three hundred thousand dollars. And she's claiming that they hacked her phone and they're just like dripping all these details. And then this is where it gets a little bit suspicious. He's like, okay, so when did it really start? And he's, she, she said like, oh, a few um, months ago it started. And then he said, wait, but I thought your phone was hacked last month. So how can it start a few months ago? And then she's like, oh no, no, I mean, I told you about it then, but it started in April. And then he's like, your phone was also hacked in April. So your phone was hacked last month and in April. And then she's like, yeah. And then he's like, well, then what was the hacking from last month? And she's like, oh, um, no, no, no. The blackmail started a month ago and then the hacking was in April. So maybe she had just kind of a mental lapse or maybe she basically got caught in a lie and then she rewrote history and then guess he went along with it and he's just trying you can tell Lee sung Jun was just trying to be very systematic about it and just trying to see like okay where's the threat how much do they know what do they want and he says are they talking about me what do they have and she says and she doesn't say anything specific she's like oh they know so much in detail and he's like how do they know and she said instead of photos they have dates and times and then he says we don't know what this means he says are these people cha from your bar like you know uh, ah. and then she's like no i don't think so and then she immediately brings up huang hana she's like you know what i didn't do any substances with huang hana but somehow i think huang hana is tangled up in up in this i for sure didn't do drugs with huang hana somehow huang hana is involved with these people now this is the con this is the part where i think she's it seems like she's lying why would it doesn't make sense like who cares like well, what 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 is what does it mean like why does she say like oh i didn't do anything with huang hana but i think she's involved in this it's a little bit strange unless she's like it looks like she's trying to point the finger at Huang Hana and then later on she actually does for real and she said that you know they are threatening to release this to the mass media you know this is like gonna create like a divorce situation a scandal situation and then she said that like well maybe I can get help from my friend who's the grandson of a judge like she's just like kind of like talking in circles and so people are just like what so I guess apparently one of the judges who is on the constitutional court, which is like Korea's Supreme Court, the highest court you can go to in Korea and the most prestigious uh, judge position and who was involved in impeaching President Park geun his grandson apparently I guess is a customer at this place because she said like, oh, I got a friend. I know somebody. Maybe they can help. And he's just like, oh, oh, yeah, okay. Then she said that the police came, raided, and searched my co-worker's house who lives above me. She's a single mom. So now we're getting the story from September. This is why I think it's important to get this, this uh, documentation from how she talked about her neighbor in September. Because now she's just bad-mouthing this neighbor upstairs and putting all the blame on the neighbor. In this conversation, she put the blame on Huang Hana. And now in... January 2024, we'll go into some other evidence in the next video. She's putting all the blame on to the neighbor upstairs. Again, that neighbor upstairs worked with her at the same hostess bar. The neighbor upstairs was her friend from jail. That's where they met each other. They really got close. But then in the past year, they started to have some conflicts in their relationship. But then in this conversation, she was saying like, oh, you know, like this has just been really tough for her. The girl upstairs, you know, the, the hackers are threatening her as well. And then Isang Jin was like, okay, let, let's focus here. What do they have on me? Like, what is the threat? Like, what is this thing? And then she said like, oh, I think we're fine now, but it's the stuff from April. We did stuff from April. They're uh, trying to do a deal with me. They want money. 
Yeah, so, so like, why would they come to her to do the deal? It's a little bit odd. And it, it kind of looks like a setup. Because wouldn't they contact probably his people if they really wanted to do a deal and get money from Yi Sun Gyun? They wouldn't go to, through the madam. And then she, she said, like, I don't know, um, you know, who these people are. So then Lee Sun Gyun says, like, OK, let me talk to Kang Sang Jin. And he knows about this stuff. Kang Sang Jin is this dude who's supposed to be like a businessman who basically introduced Lee Sun Gyun to this hostess bar, to the good place. And they all three know each other. It sounds like they kind of, you know did stuff together and so he said like okay he knows about this stuff then we're uh going to you know to talk then he said like he's trying to bring it back to the hacking he's like hey so if you were hacked in april and then she cuts him off this is why it sounds so suspicious she cuts him off right when he's trying to you know kind of put pieces together where it's, it looks like she's not telling the truth she's like the thing is, is that it's not safe for you right now. So she's trying to, I guess, raise, it sounds like a setup, like she's being manipulative, like raising the fear quotient, not like the concern quotient. She's like, you know, when we were drunk, we did stuff. And he said, they know that. Now, this is the the thing that, you know, this was the recording that came out before uh, Lee Sun Gyun uh, decided to end things. And I think in the recording, I mean, on the whole, I, I think most of us would, would really side, definitely side with him, but it does make him look like he, you know, at least was spending too much time with people that you probably shouldn't be spending uh, time with. And he said like, okay, so they know that. So like whatever that was that happened in April, uh, you know, we don't know exactly what it was. And then she said, no, I don't think they know exactly what we did, but they do know you're coming and going. So again, that's very manipulative because she said that, you know, like, oh, they know what we did in April. And he's like, oh, they know exactly what we did. And like, no, they just know like you came in, in and out. I was like, but... <sighs> So it looks like she was trying to get him scared and then not ask questions later. And then she's like, oh, but I'm thinking about the worst case scenario. So she's like, oh, if there's a worst case scenario, what are we going to do? It's not the worst case. So it's just very manipulative right now. And then she said like, oh, you know, I sent my hair in for drug testing. We should get more results. Um, initial results showed even my diet pills. So like this is kind of, you know, and then he's like, yeah, 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 yeah. But like, so you don't know who these black mailers are. She's like, oh, no, they're probably like low life scum. They're low life scum. And then she said like, oh, Huang Hana. Yeah, Huang Hana. I never mixed. I never, you know mixed with her in terms of like doing substances but i think she's the culprit or she's the dealer and then he's like but how do they know all this and then she goes into like oh didn't i mention you know my friend oh who is this girl oh i can't remember her name and he's like oh like it's, it doesn't matter like and she's like oh yeah you know the lesbian who went to jail for drugs like what's her name and he's like who cares like what is this and then she said like you know what it's because I think that they were at my house when I had to leave for like an hour or two to go to a wedding. So she's kind of pointing in the direction that it might be Huang Hana and uh, this girl named uh, Chung Da An. And he's, he's like, you know, their name is not important. Who they are is not important. What, you know, do they know what's on your phone or like, do they just know like, going in and out or you know what you know what kind of accusation is it and she's like yeah it's like a it's an accusation and then she's like yeah but what is it stuff on your phone what's there like it's uh, it's not anything about on your phone and she's like uh no they have evidence you're like, then what is the evidence? So he's like, okay, so they have evidence that I did something, you know, bad. And 
you know, in terms of substances. And she's like, no, that's just the worst case scenario that I would think would happen. And then so he's like, so do they have evidence? And she's like, yeah. And he's like, video? She's like, no, 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 not video. But from what they're saying, they have audio files. And then she brings up again, the people who came to my house were Hwang Hana and uh, Cheng Dan. And then she was basically, uh, you know, saying like, I think they planted a bug in my house. And he's like, really? Your house? Like, yeah. And then he's like, well, did they send anything to you? And then she said, oh, well, they sent something to me, but I deleted it right away. But she's recording this phone call, okay? And then he's like, did you listen to it? She's like, oh, they know the relationship, or the details of our relationship too well. And he's like, yeah, but did you listen to it? She's like, no, 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 I didn't listen to it. I just deleted it. And he's like, okay. And then... She said, like, the hackers confronted her, like, on text and said, like, we know Lee sun Kyun came in, in and out of your house on such and such date. And he went to your bar. Then he went to your house. And and she said, like, you know, they just, like, kind of throw this out there, like, on this text in this chat room. And then they just leave the chat room. So I can't screen capture it. I can't do, you know, I can't. Basically, if he's just like, well, you send me the screenshot. She's like, oh, I can't. That's why it sounded like totally like a setup and that she was in on this, that it wasn't like a real hacker that she was uh, really being kind of threatened by and feeling anxious about. So then he's getting to it. He's like, so what do they want from you? She's like, they want money. And then he's like, so if we give them money, what do they say they will do? Silence. Like she, total silence. I guess she couldn't figure out a lie. And then he said, they want me to send it. And she said, no, they said, if I don't take care of it, they're going to expose all of it. Like expose all of it. And she's like, yeah, like she said it kind of in a creepy tone, like it was her making a threat. So at this point, Lee sun was like, okay, let me talk to Sang Jin and, you know, we'll figure this out. And she's like, you're going to have to hurry. Like who's her? Like you know, like as if she's in a two for one sale that's going to be expiring at the end of the night, and then she and then she kind of like you know lobs it in there because she's also recording this phone call and she's like, you know, you smoked me weed next to me and I didn't smoke any. He's like, what? And she says, oh, I don't do it because it stays in my system and you know in this drug testing kit, you know, and then she just. She's just like ADHD all over the place. Then she says like, oh, well, this guy, this hacker doesn't use Kakao Talk because it leaves a record. I'll send you some pictures right now. So she sent some pictures. I don't know what kind of pictures she sent, but it did create a big sigh in Lee sun -gyun. And then uh, actual worry where he's like, this is crazy. What am I supposed to do now? So somehow she upped the ante. And I think this is what also was probably you know, kind of like, like a chamber of bullets in a magazine that was just like ready to go that probably also was deployed in December. Whenever she got desperate or other people who are involved in this got desperate to up the ante, she did some, at this point in the phone call, he was, didn't seem so concerned. He's like, okay, we gotta figure this out. But then she upped the ante somehow. And then he started to be really kind of, scared so then she said that like yeah like you know like he's like what what am i supposed to do now she's like mm -hmm. like as if like the tone that i heard was like you know you you can pay quickly <laughs> and then he said like oh you contacted other people um then as well they don't have dirt on them and then she's like oh those um people can't be contacted but i was able to contact you so like she said like she's basically implying like this these hackers yeah if they hacked her phone they must have dirt on not just Lee Sun Yoon. and then so he's like saying like okay well what do you know probably some other celebrities you know what did they say she's like oh i can't get into contact with them you know i try to contact everybody you're the one i was able to get into contact with and you know, she was just basically saying like, okay, but all they really know is 
you know, coming and going, like, you know, in and out. I don't know exactly what these people have. And then he's like, okay, let me check on it. And then she's like, I think these people are really, really driven, you know, by action. Like, they're threatening. Like, they're going to do things if you don't comply. So that was the, the, the first phone call. On the same day, so then Kang Sang-jin, the friend of Lee sun Gyun, called... Kim Nam Hee, and so we have that phone recording too. So obviously, it's Kim Nam Hee recording these uh, phone calls, and you know that got released. And she even had the audacity to basically, like, while she's talking to Kang Sang Jin, say like, "Oh, you know, you know, I can't record anything like any phone calls because I have an iPhone and it doesn't have that function." When you know everybody knows you can download an app, so he. Seemed to be a little bit more skeptical, but like I said in you know previous videos, seems like he also was just kind of remembering, like you know, he had mixed emotions. So she basically said that Huang Hana and her friend came by one to two months ago, which would be August or July. But then she also said that the incriminating evidence against Lee Sun Gyun was from April. So this doesn't make sense. So she's basically saying that like, oh, they planted a bug in August or July. And so they have this evidence against Lee Sun Gyun for something that he did in April. That makes absolutely no sense. And then so he was just kind of like confused about this, but then she just kept talking and talking. And then he's like, okay, so how much do they know? She's like, everything, everything. So he's like, okay, so then they also had recording equipment planted in your house even before July or August, you know, like how did they get the stuff from April? She's like, I don't know. They know everything from this year. So then he's like, wait a minute, but like, how did they record it at your house? It must be somebody, you know, if they plant, somebody was able to plant bugs in your house. And she's like, oh, well, you know, Huang Hana came by recently. And so she was basically repeating that story about Huang Hana and her friend were there for like one or two hours while she had to leave. And then this dude was like flexing. He's like, okay, well, you know, I'm going to be going into the National Intelligence Service. Like it's basically like Korea CIA over at Namsan. Now, Namazon, you know, is the mountain in Seoul where they have the tower. And that used to be like in the 70s, like the headquarters of the Korean CIA, but not anymore. That, I mean, that 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 place, the headquarters moved a long time ago. So this guy is like totally like lying in a weird way. And, <laughs> and he's like, oh, well, you know, we're going to assemble a team. We'll find out these hackers. You know, once I go in there and start my job, you know, I'll be able to do that now. We'll go into this in a different video, but there's been a different uh, YouTuber who contacted the agency and they said, like, it's not true. It's not true. He's not, you know, he's not coming to work for us. <laughs> Definitely all he's going to find in Nam's Hunt or some, you know, hiking trails and, you know, cotton candy. So he basically lied about that. And he's like, OK, well, you know, we'll we'll check into it. And so that's how that conversation played out but it really did look like at this point in September she did not suspect or she did not throw any blame to the upstairs neighbor which she is doing now the friend she had a falling out with instead in September she was trying to push all of this on Huang Hana so now the question becomes is was she perhaps pressured by now Huang Hana's team to then throw the blame over onto her friend, the upstairs neighbor, and try to make it look like it's the upstairs neighbor now? Or did Huang Hana really not have anything to do with this part of the scandal? And she was just trying to like throw it over to Huang Hana because maybe she's a rival and she was working with her friend up above? Or was she really just receiving random messages from a hacker and really just being the middleman of just the messenger to Lee Sun Gyun saying like I'm getting these messages I'm getting these threats this is what they want this is what you should do but that part didn't add up because it all looked like the evidence that they apparently had 
it looked like she had made it like 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 she recorded stuff in her house and it, and it and the timelines didn't match and it certainly looks like there's more to this story that they're not telling each side seems like they are telling half truths and a lot of lies poured on top so what do you guys think comment below remember to like share and subscribe and we'll see you again next time bye bye